new campers, this video is for you. If you want some ideas for starting your fires at camp, come on back. I got some stuff to show you. What's going on everybody, it's Patrick Mid 10 Outdoors. How is my outdoor crew doing? Hope this video finds you well. So, dedicating this one to new campers that are just getting out there for the first time or wanting to get out there for the first time. And uh, looking for ideas of starting their fire, campfires. Now, I've been using propane fire pits for uh, the last couple of fire camping trips, fire trips, camping trips, but I'm not totally against or totally gone away from firewood altogether and burning campfires. Love the smell. My wife doesn't. I do. Love the smell of a campfire burning. The ambiance, everything you get from a campfire, it just makes part of the camping trip. But if you're a first timer, it can be a pain in the butt to get one going sometimes. I'm gonna show you some things that'll make it easier. Then we're gonna talk about firewood at the same time. All right guys, so here down below is most of my, what I take with me for fire building. Now you can do this as simple as you want. You can do this as elaborate as you want. You can even do like I've done here and have just a bag full of stuff and not have to have all of this with you now what have i got okay so you got to start a fire you're going to need either tinder or use some alternatives like this this is what i call commercial fire starters uh, you take two of these or you take two of these and you put them under your firewood light them up and you get about a well about eight to ten minute burn out of this and this both of them burn about the same this one is from Royal Oak Fire Starters, and they're just a little fire, I don't know, like a probably an impregnated twig. Let's throw this in real quick. This will show you these burning. Okay, so the next one I have is from Duraflame fire starting cubes and that's what these are uh, they're just in little individual packs and you'll see I've got these in this I like both of these these are a little messy to keep in your stuff so you might want to bag them up uh, take them out of the original box. I just put them in a quart size Ziploc bag. Same with these. So I can grab one or two of them, three or four of them. It recommends two per when you're starting a fire. So I, I get that on each side. Um, what I've got here is a kit that I keep in this box that has a little bit of this in it. This is a different one. It's called a Zip. It's a commercial um, fire starter. Now, you can use whatever you want. I mean, if you want to get dryer lint and, and uh, paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls and fill it up with dryer lint, that kind of stuff, you will make the same thing as what you're getting here, okay? These are just something that you can buy off the shelf. And I know a lot of people want something you can just buy off the shelf, run out and get going. Okay, so there's another method where you can use pre-done fire logs such as the Duraflame here that I've got. This is about a three hour log. Or I've got these little ones that you can use to start fires with too. You just light each other end of the bag, lay it in a fire build of some kind and take off, let those take off. Now lighting your campfires is the next thing. I really like these. These are the Zippo matches these are really stupid long matches you'll see how long that thing is whoop if i can get under the camera see how long that thing is and let me tell you you've got plenty of time with this thing to light both ends of this log with no problems whatsoever 
These are called stormproof matches. You can find those Walmart Academy, any of those places. I'm sure Amazon carries them online. Um, but basically it's just another style of match like this. Um, it's stupid long. I'll try to pull them out real quick. Now both of these have fire strikers on them and sometimes they put an extra one in the pack itself which I think that one's probably already gone. Nope, there it is. There's the extra fire strikers, but there's these. So they're really long matches also. Um, they're called stormproof matches. Supposedly you can light these suckers in a hurricane, I guess, and uh, keep on going. Um, the next thing I recommend, if you want to bypass matches altogether, but now these can break, is these lighters right here. This is one of the ones, they're the uh, torch flame and when you light this thing see that sucker man that that bad boy right there <laughs> it gets going um, then if you want to practice with it and learn it I've got a fire kit here um, the ferrocium rod and striker you can do that also I'm going to say if you're camping with your family and it's getting kind of chilly out, getting kind of laid out, you ain't got time to choke around with one of these. Let's go ahead and get a fire going. But with this, you're doing basically you're striking the ferrocium rod to make a spark. With it, you're going to need some pretty decent tinder, um, such as impregnated cotton balls, twine. Um, I even, in this little pouch, this is dried bark. This will go up. Whoop, this will go up pretty darn quick. Um, I'll even tell you this: a little bit of hand sanitizer will go a long way, also. And these little dudes, these wet fires, you can get a fire going with these if you need to do that. Uh, you can also boil water with one of those little wet fires. Okay, so like I said, if you wanted to use one of these. This one broke. So if you want to use one of these uh, to start your fire with, you can. Um, but this thing's only going to last a couple of hours. And it don't get very hot. I've used these quite often. I try to keep three or four of them in the truck at all times. So that way I can get a fire going and get us warmed up pretty quick. Now, if I'm not in a big hurry to get the fire going or I've got time to play with it, I will. But now, firewood. That's the other thing. I know in Tennessee State Parks, you cannot bring wood in from other areas. They ask you not to because you're entering, you're bringing a chance of disease into the forest. Um, I know when I stayed up at uh, South Fork, it was the same thing. You could use wood there from there that had fallen, no problem. And you can do that in any park, any Tennessee State Park. If wood is laying on the ground at the park, by all means, use it up. But if you bring in firewood, they want this kind of firewood. What is this kind of firewood? It's heat treated firewood. What they do is they put this in a big oven. They bake it to bake out any disease, bugs, or anything else that may be in the wood that would cause a disease transplant into their forest. But like I said, I know Smoky Mountains, I know Daniel Boone, and I know Tennessee State Parks will not allow you to bring any firewood in that's not heat treated. Now, as long as it's heat treated, it doesn't matter where you take this. I bought this, I think I bought this at Tractor Supply. I can take this into any state park I want to. Something I will say about this stuff, it burns fast. Um, something about it, I don't know, I guess because it's so dried out, it burns really fast. But it also starts really easy for the most part. Um, what I'll do when I take this out, if I've got this with me, I want to just get it out of the bed of the truck. I'll lay it under the bed of the truck. That way, if it rains overnight, this is still dry and it's not getting wet. But uh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you a couple different ways of building fires. We're not going to actually build a fire, but we're going to show different ways of building fires and how I use this and this in conjunction. Okay, so I cut the bundle open and I'm going to save this for later i'm going to save the wrapping and everything because i will put this back together and tape it up um they can tell by looking at this wood it's not something i brought from home but uh, let's get a couple pieces out 
and we're going to show some. I'm going to show you a couple things real quick. A couple different fire lays that I like when I'm camping. Let me see if I can get this out of the way without destroying everything in sight. I've got all kinds of dangers laying around the garage today. Okay, so I'm going to lay the wood on this log after it's started. After this gets burning good, then I'll lay this wood. I'll start laying it on it like so. Now what this does, and this is called a lean-to lay, what it does is the wind can get underneath both sides of this or this way and it's feeding the fire with air. And that way it can get started. And as this, I notice this starts burning, I'll lay these right here like so. Now this starts getting me a good base fire going. Good, warm, hot fire going. Now, if you want to burn it down to coals, you can to cook on. But this is kind of one of the ways I like to do it. Um, you can. You can lay it like so if you want to. And that way you get a good cross section of fire going. Then you can start building your fire however you want to. So now I'm going to start a fire just using the firewood. Now, what you can do is you can get little twigs and everything. This is one of my, one of my favorite lays outside of the lean-to because once again, you're getting air in both directions here, from here and here. So you're gonna get a good start out burn. Um, after that, then you can do it however you want to. With this, I can take one of these, lay it right here, light both ends. That air is still coming in both directions. So this is gonna burn really good and start both these logs and probably start these two logs too. There again, I can lay a couple of these right in here down at the base, set both of them on fire, and it's probably gonna start the fire right in here in this area. And with the wind blowing through there or any breeze whatsoever, it's gonna get these logs burning. Same with these things. I would drop a couple right down in there with my little torch lighter or my big, big matches, light each one, step away, Feed it a little bit of light fuel, twigs and stuff. They're going to be laying all over the campsite. Throw them in there. Keep the kids from playing with them and poking each other in the eyeballs. But uh, you'll get this fire going and you'll have a good base for your fire. And you can add to this as it goes. And at this point, once this is going good, then you can start doing however you want to. Well, I hope this quick video has brought you some really good information on building your fires, how to start a fire. Um, getting your fires going, how to continue keeping your fires going, and some of the things you have to look out for. Um, like I said, the firewood thing, uh, that's the thing here in the state of Tennessee. You cannot bring firewood you chop down from your house into a state park. You can't take firewood from, chop down firewood. Let me, let me specify that. You cannot take chop down firewood from the Smoky Mountains to Fall Creek Falls. That's illegal. Um, because you're transplanting, you could be transplanting a disease or a bug that's not native to that area. So this is why this is, this kind of stuff is so, um, important that you use that kind of wood. And like I said, the park rangers can tell that this stuff's been heat treated. Um, the next biggest important thing when it comes to your campfires for you, for you new guys, now, some of you, some of you guys may not know this, and I, I get mad when I see it, but at the same time, I go, somebody didn't know. But it never fails when I leave a campgrounds that I drive by a campsite and I see one still smoldering. There's nobody around. I will stop, get out of my truck, and I usually keep a. I, I, if I put my fire out in the morning, I usually fill my jug back up, so that way, if I'm headed out, if I see one still burning, I'll go over and put it out you know what I mean. Um, so make sure the, the best thing to do is, is especially if you're staying at a campsite, it's got plenty of water, whatever you use for dishes or whatever that night or that morning, um, whether you have a big pot, whatever, fill it up with water, douse the fire pit. The general rule of thumb that I was taught is to make sure you can feel no heat coming from the ground start it around a little bit make sure if you stir it around you don't catch an ember 
if you catch an ember up, then you're not out. You're still not completely out. Pour more water on it. Once you've started, I mean, done that a couple times and you start that campfire around, there's absolutely nothing coming off of it. No steam, because steam's another telltale sign that it still could go. You want to make sure it's absolutely cold before you leave. I understand you forget. I'm just trying to help you to remember to make sure those campfires are extinguished. Same with going to bed at night. Make sure the fire's completely down before you go to bed. All right, guys, that's it. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please ask down below. I will be glad to answer them. Sometimes it takes me a few hours to respond because I may be working or whatever. But if your state has a firewood thing, just like our state does, that it has to be heat treated firewood, put it down there in the bottom because I want to know. I want to keep a mental note of what states I go to that requires this kind of stuff. All right, guys, that's it. I appreciate you watching. Be prepared. See you on the next one.